So what we're going to be doing today is doing a comparison with the iPhone 15 Pro and the Canon C70. I kind of want to do the R8 as well, but I think I'm going to save that to another video. We're just going to get right into it. The iPhone 15 Pro against the Canon C70. The 15 Pro cost $1,000, I think. This is the 256 version, so I think it's $1,100. The Canon C70 is $5,500. Big difference, so obviously, you know, you may be able to tell in this comparison. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a little montage up. Camera A is going to be one camera. Camera B is going to be the other. And you're going to see comparison side by side. Not side by side, but it's going to be clip after clip of the iPhone and then the Canon C70. So with that, we're going to get right into it. Leave your comments below of which camera you think is which, and obviously at the end of the video, I will give you the results, but try to guess in the comments before you get the results. So here it goes. Okay, so now that you've seen the footage, I'm gonna go over what I did to kind of match these cameras up perfectly. First of all, I'm shooting in ProRes 4K60 log on the iPhone 15 Pro and on the Canon C70, I shot RAW. C-Log2 is what it's called. I did that so I can match the colors up as good as I could. As you've seen, it looked pretty dang close, but when you shoot RAW on the C70, you can make the colors match literally anything. So that's why I shot RAW. Hopefully you could tell the difference because if not, my goodness, I wasted $5,500. Not really, I mean, there's a lot of other perks that has built-in NDs, you know, your audio, all that. But anyways, also the lens I kept at 15 millimeter on the Canon C70. I am using a 15 to 35 lens RF 2.8, but I left it at 15 millimeters, so it did, this didn't move in any of the footage and neither did the C70. So hopefully that made it match a little better. Now that you've seen the footage, before we get into the results, I'm gonna go over some of the specs, some of the things that they did to the iPhone 15 Pro to make it better from the iPhone 14 Pro. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna go over is what's different from the 14 and the 15 is it shoots ProRes 4K60 now on an external drive. Plug this in to the camera, to the phone I should say, and now you have 4K60 on your camera. If you don't know how it works, my last video will show you exactly how this works. I already made a video on it. That is new. What's cool about it is 4K60. Obviously the quality is really high. ProRes is high quality, lots of colors. You can do what you want to with it. It's pretty awesome. But now if you wanna slow it down and get some slow-mo, now you can. Couldn't do that before. It was 4K30 was the max and it was internal, so it would fill up your memory immediately. So another awesome thing with that, when you're shooting ProRes, you can shoot in log, which more dynamic range, more colors, all the benefits of shooting log you now have with this camera. What I love about this is when you plug this in, we have a 500 gigabyte SSD here. It cannot be a thumb drive. In my last video, I seen people trying to use thumb drives in this, and it's not gonna work. Those are not fast enough. It has to be a thousand megabits per second, write and read at least. That's all I've used, so that's what I know works. I don't know if the 500 megabits per second will work, but I do know the thousand both ways will work. Do not try to use a thumb drive. Your phone is not gonna work. It's gonna be stuttery, jittery footage if it even lets you do it, but don't do that. That's really awesome. You can put, let me get back on track. You could plug this in and all the footage goes on here. You don't have to worry about filling up your storage on here, which is really great. The only thing that I would use your iPhone storage for is the regular MP4 files that you could shoot, you know, for social media and stuff. But if you're shooting in ProRes 4K60 on a hard drive, that stuff you could use for B-roll on a TV show or, you know, a YouTube video that's high production. All that you can use in a high production environment because it really is good quality. As you see, the footage looked really good, it's crispy, yes. And Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve, there is a LUT that when you drag it in, it automatically converts it to Rec. 709. Premiere does not have that LUT yet, or I haven't seen where I can download it yet. But I have Final Cut on my iPad, so I'm able to convert it, color grade it on the iPad, put it in Premiere, it's good to go. But having log is really convenient because you get the dynamic range. 
gives you way more dynamic range and way more colors. It's kind of hard to explain, but it really looks good. It's, it's high quality. I mean, just look at the footage. I don't have to explain it. It looks fantastic. As you've seen, it matched up with the C70 very nicely. It also has Academy color encoding, just gives you way more colors to work with. Yes, it shoots in 10-bit log um, ProRes, but the Academy color encoding just gives you more colors to work with. So the video formats the iPhone 15 Pro lets you shoot in is HEVC, H.264 and ProRes. I think the iPhone 14 Pro let you do that as well, but now you can go all the way to 4K60. That is definitely a big deal. I know you're probably tired of hearing people say it, but 4K60 ProRes and Log is a huge deal, and it's really awesome that it lets you record it in an SSD. Fantastic. All right, so with that, let's get into the results of the iPhone 15 Pro and the Canon C70. Here are the results. Let me know what you think in the comments. As you see, the footage looked great. The iPhone 15 Pro can definitely hold its own. Yes, it looks good. It, I mean, you could almost say it looks just as good as the C70 in some shots. But in my opinion, the reason why people go out and get cinema cameras is because it has audio options, has a built-in ND, and it has zoom on a lens, and you have bokeh. You have all kinds of things, and you can record without it getting hot. There's a fan in the Canon C70. This weekend, we shot a show in North Carolina, and we had to leave my Canon C70 running for hours on some stuff. An interview that went for hours. It was like an hour and a half. Don't let me say hour. It was an hour and a half. But it had to run the whole time, and I had to depend on it to not overheat. It was in a hot RV. We couldn't leave the AC on because noise so it just had to run and it had to work this phone we used it and we did shoot some awesome b-roll as i'm sure you've seen in this video of these cars going crazy but after about 10 minutes it would get hot and we had to let it cool down because 4k prores 60 is heavy footage and yes it's throwing it onto this this is getting hot and this the cpu and the gpu has to process all that power so yes it's going to get hot if it didn't get hot i'd be confused and i'd be like it's lying it's not really doing prores but it does get hot so when the phone gets hot, what we do is we just let it cool down and then go shoot again. But we also, we only use this for emergency purposes. We didn't, only whenever the camera was at the RV and we couldn't, you know, go over there right away, we would use the phone. But the phone has amazing quality, as you see in this footage. It's, it's good. It's good for a backup if your camera is not on you at the moment. That's what I said in the last video. That's what I'm saying in this video. It's great for that. The footage is fantastic. But yes, you can't just let it run unlimited until it fills this up. This 500 gigabytes has 33 minutes. This phone will not let you sit there and record for 33 minutes straight in 4K 60. In 4K 30, it'll let you record a little longer, but I doubt it's going to be the whole time of filling this up because it's gonna get hot, and that's normal. So with that, that's all there is in this video. I wanted to compare the C70 with the iPhone 15 Pro. So make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell notification, and I'll see you in the next video.